Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi. My name is Sasha Dowdy, and I work at the Library of Congress Young Reader Center. This is a special place for kids within the library, for kids, teens, and family. Everybody under 16 is welcome, and we're an awesome place where you can start finding out about the library's treasures and exhibits. All day here at the Library of Congress National Book Festival, we're recognizing and celebrating the importance of reading and authors and books. The Library of Congress makes it seem easy to do this every year, but the truth is the National Book Festival is a huge undertaking. It's a huge financial undertaking and it's free for everyone because of the general support, generous support from our sponsors and supporters. Spread the joy of reading with your gift online at loc.gov slash donate from the festival app or when you purchase books today. And now on to the main event. I am here to introduce a spectacular author, Ms. Jewel Parker Rhodes. Ms. Rhodes, yes, please give it up for her. She is a giant when it comes to creativity and creative writing. She has a degree in drama criticism, a master of arts in English, and a doctor of arts in creative writing. And she was the founding, arti she is the founding artistic director of the Virginia G. Piper Center for Creating Writing at Arizona State University. So when you talk about creative writing, <laughs> she knows so much about it, she's overflowing. And she's of course an author of six books for grown-ups and five critically acclaimed books for kids. And those are Ninth Ward, Sugar, Bayou Magic, Towers Falling, and Ghost Boys. And Ghost Boys is the book that we are all here to hear about. A book about racial prejudice and the history of prejudice towards young black boys in this country. It's required reading and it's something that we absolutely need today. So it is my honor to introduce Ms. Jewel Parker Rhodes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. I am so excited to be here. It's like a dream come true because all my life I wanted to write for you guys. I wanted to write for youth. So the fact that I'm doing it now thrills me beyond measure. Now I am very proud of my Louisiana Girls Trilogy. Lanisha in Ninth Ward surviving Hurricane Katrina. Sugar, in the book Sugar, learning that you can be free and see the whole wide world and make friends with everyone. And then Maddie in Bayou Magic, who has to save the plant life, the sea life, the animal life from the BP oil spill. I am proud of those wondrous characters. But those are stories that I chose to write for children. But there were two books that I was asked to write that each time I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. The first book was Towers Falling. My editor asked me to write about 9-11 so that kids would have a chance of what it was all about. And I said, no. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that all of you who are soon going to grow up and be voting citizens deserve to know how our world has changed, deserve to know that we need to have a country that remains true to its democratic values and that we don't change because of tragedy, but instead we go stronger and better. Now, Towers Falling is actually based on a real school in New York PS 146, and all the teachers there, they actually saw the towers being hit by the airplanes. And the teachers were so traumatized that they swore they would never, ever teach the story of 9-11 to their students. So this book was meant to have them begin the journey. Can you play it for me, please? It's actually a mystery story where Deja, who is a homeless African-American girl, discovers that her father was a victim of 9-11. She doesn't know that she's homeless and that he's sick because of 9-11. She just feels alienated. But her little brother says, no, we're a family. We're strong together. And when she goes to school, her teacher says, what are all the ways in which we're interconnected? Just like you are all interconnected with your family, your friends, living in DC, going to schools. 
and this is my favorite, where Deja says, family, friends, me, we are all Americans. Now in school, she learns about how the towers were built, and she also sees for the very first time the flames on her friend's Ben's computer. And she and Ben decide, we're gonna go to the 9-11 Memorial. And they get on a subway, and there they see what America's all about. Multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-diverse in all kinds of wondrous ways. And at the Memorial, they see the footprints of the towers and they can imagine the absence, the ghost towers. And at the memorial, which I hope you all get to go see, you'll see water falling down into the footprints, reaffirming that life rises, America rises. And there's my splendid Deja girl, her friend Ben, her friend Sabine, and her teacher, Miss Garcia. And this is a book that I urge you all to read and to talk to your teachers and parents about. So I'm very proud that I did that book. And when I got done with this book, my editor said, Jewel, why don't you write about young men of color, children younger than 18, being killed due to racism and racial bias? What did I say? No. No way. But again, I thought about it. And I thought how all of you young people are going to be the change, that all of you have the opportunity to make the world a better place where everyone is judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. And I remember Emmett Till being murdered when I was just a little girl and then I was affected by the murders of Tamir Rice and Trayvon Martin, and so I created a character named Jerome. The novel talks about how everybody needs their story heard. Everybody needs their story felt. And that we all connect across time, that all of you are gonna make the world a better place for the next generation. So students, children, feel your power. Another part of the novel is that you can't undo wrong. So bad things do happen. So what do we want to do? Do our best to make things right. Now I want to show you this wondrous public service announcement. Why? Can you slide or something? Why? Why are you following me? Why my hoodie make me look suspicious? Why does my music make me dangerous? Why are people that are supposed to protect me attacking me? Why are you afraid of me? Why do you think I'm dangerous? Why do I afraid of people who are supposed to protect me? Why can't I make a peace sign without you labeling the gang sign? Why does standing on ground only work when I'm on the ground? Why do you show this photo over this one? Why do you only stop and frisk me? Why do you have low expectations for me? Why can't I run down the street without causing alarms? Why do you think I'm a thug? Why do you assume I'm armed? Why can't I break? Why is my mom scared every time I leave the house? Why are you targeting me? Why am I a target? Why? 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 I know why. And it has to stop. It must stop. Because I have dreams. Because I can change the world. Because I will make a difference. Because I have a family. Because I am strong. Because I am talented. I have a voice. I can find a cure. I have goals. I can lead the country. I am determined. I have a future. Because I'm a scholar. I am powerful. I'm someone's friend. I'm someone's brother. I'm someone's son. Someone loves me. And because my life matters too. My life matters. 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 All lives matter. And so did theirs. Ghost Boys talks about, yes, God, it's beautiful. It talks about bearing witness, and this filmmaker, Carrie Davis, is bearing witness how art can make us understand tragedy better. 
My novel seeks to help us understand racial bias better so that children can help be the change. And in this story, there's a whole crew of ghost boys, Emmett Till, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, and the only person who can see the ghost boys is Sarah, the daughter of the white police officer. And Sarah is going to be the one that helps make the change, that helps make the world a better place. The novel ends with these last words, Jerome, the ghost boy, saying, bear witness, my tale is told. Wake, only the living can make the world better. Live and make it better. Don't let me or anyone else tell this tale again. Peace out, ghost boy. Thank you, let's hear some questions. Yay, thank you. Or we can go, whoops. Whoops, now I messed it up. <laughs> questions, yes sir. What inspired you to make Ghost Boys? You know, I am the mother of a black son and my boy has the sweetest, warmest, most wonderful heart and personality. And as he grew older, people would make projections of stereotypes upon him. They would see him in a negative way, and it just broke my heart. And I wanted to make a book that bore witness that nobody should ever judge anybody out of fear, out of prejudice. And so I'm helping to make the world better for him, and I'm helping, hoping you guys will help make the world better for all the world's other children of color. Oh, and do you remember me from the Frederick Public Library? The pro yeah, yes, I do. I can't see as well because the light is in my face. But do you know, for the kids who come to see me, it's almost as though your images, your words become part of my heart. And it's like I had this idea that when I'm maybe dying one day, that I'm going to call on all the images of all the children that I've ever met and all the stories they've ever written me and hold it and press it close to my heart. So thank, thank you. you. Can I have a hug later? Thank you. Yes. Well, over here. Um, when you thought of the idea, how old was your son? Well, how old was my son? Yeah. My son is, um, I started writing the book when he was about 25, and he's now 28. And actually, he's studying um, a master's in nursing program in Baltimore. So I'm really, really happy that he is using his life to help people who are ill and to make, to make a difference. But we talk about race and stereotyping. Uh, we talk about how you can make a difference by making sure that you don't become bitter or so sad. You have to be triumphant. You have to live and make it better and believe in that always. Right on? Right on. You're so beautiful. Yes. Hi, I have two questions. My oh. first one is... Is this Mary? Yes. Hi, Mary. My first one is, who inspired you to be the person you are today? My grandmother. My grandmother raised me uh, from the time I was an infant. And my grandmother filled me with so much loving and so much wisdom. And she'd say, Jewel, everybody in the world is as good as anybody else where all of mixed blood stew. She'd also say, Jewel child, do good, and it'll fly right back to you. And she also said, Jewel child, wear clean underwear, always. <laughs> the grandmother on hot summer nights would tell me stories. And I think she was the first storyteller that really had an impact on me. Now my grandmother in those era, she never finished the third grade. She didn't know how to read books or write books, but she worked hard so that I could become educated, so that I could read and write books for you. But grandmother was the wisest, most wonderful woman I've ever known. So number two, Mary. My second question is, why was Sarah able to see Jerome instead of Kim? 
You know, the reason why Kim doesn't need to see Jerome is that Kim is very much connected to her grandmother who believes in every good buying God, that African spirits and ancestors are a part of her life. So Kim knows that from her grandmother. She also now has Carlos, the young Hispanic guy who gave Jerome the gun that caused the incident um, to be misconstrued by the police officer. And Carlos has the Day of the Dead, which is just like every goodbye ain't gone. And he doesn't need to see Jerome either because he knows spirits, the afterlife, the presence of good souls are always with us. But Sarah's tradition, she didn't have that cultural, spiritual tradition. She was left without it. So Jerome has to teach her no, if you live your life believing that you can bear witness, that you can honor the dead, you will live a better life. So she needs to learn that. And that's a way in which African American heritage, Hispanic American heritage, all infuse her as a young white girl to make the world a better place. I think that's pretty cool. Don't you, Mary? Yes. I do too. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, was it a star or a girl? I did. I was looking. I was a girl. I saw. Looked at the guy behind me. Why you. gave you the di the idea to get, become a a writer? You know, um, I always wrote stories because my grandmother was always telling me stories. But it wasn't until I was a junior in college when I saw my first book written by a black woman author, and it was like, wow, black women write books. I didn't know that. I didn't know black men wrote books, or the people from Africa or Chile or all over the world wrote books. But once I discovered that, once I could see my culture in a book, I switched my major to English and I started writing seriously and professionally. And in particular, I fell in love with Louisiana, which has all kinds of wonderful ghosts. Because I wanted to tell you that I really write books too. You write books too? I am so proud of you. Never doubt for a moment that because you're young that you can't do great work. I know a lot of young writers who have been published. There's also a market, children's market for young writers. And there are also online and print magazines that look for young people's writing. And with my own kids, they went to a high school for writing. And they're actually, did you know scholarships to college for writing stories? So you get a teacher, your parents, or if you ever want to, you can email me. There are a lot of opportunities. So if you want to go out there and publish a book, I'm going to be the first one in line to buy it. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thank you. What inspired you to write Sugar? Sugar. I had been going to China uh, every year for about five years teaching the Chinese how to do creative writing. And a friend of mine sent me a book saying that in Louisiana and Mississippi at re during Reconstruction, they brought in Chinese workers to work the plantations. So a lot of African Americans newly free, they went north. So they had a labor shortage. But these Chinese were treated sometimes as bad as if they were slaves. They were treated just horrifically. And so in my story, Sugar is the young woman who brings together the Chinese workers with the remaining African workers. She also is the one that reaches out to the former master's white son, and she brings them all together in a community of love and a community of freedom. One of the things that I hadn't really sort of impacted or known well was that America historically has had many different times where different immigrant groups at first might have been welcome, but at other times was pushed out. So this enabled me to tell a story where the Chinese were not allowed to become American citizens. We had the Chinese Exclusion Act, and it seemed to me appropriate to have a newly freed slave girl who's filled with the power of civil rights wanting to be there and be friends and advocate for the Chinese as well. So it was just a happy accident. Anything else? Yes. Uh, how old were you when you started writing? 
probably about seven years old. And during high school, I wrote a lot of poetry and it was terrible. When I was in high school, I had a big afro, this big. And I used to wear dashikis and love beads and write really bad poetry. It wasn't until I was in college that I had the chance to open a cookbook that told me about a voodoo queen, that told me about the magic and mystery of New Orleans, that I began to just write from my imagination. And it's been a lovely journey ever since. But writing for youth, writing for you, absolutely the best. Thank you. Any other questions? I've got perhaps maybe two minutes before I say goodbye, goodbye to all of you. And I want to encourage all of you young people, you know, when people say, I want to be a writer, how do I do it? Well, the very first thing you do is read and read and read some more. Because as you're reading, you're learning about styles and ideas and plots and themes that you like, and they all go inside you. And one day when you start to write a story, you'll actually start drawing that out of you. Secondly, never ever believe that your experience isn't worthy of a book. Everything about you, everything you do, everything you will do can be written in a book and shared with someone else. It's an act of love, an act of communication. And did you guys know I'm a grandmother? I have Clara. Clara is two years old. So you know who Clara's books she's be buying books from? Maybe all of you guys. We need you. We need diverse books. We need all stories. So grow up, read, and write, and make the world better. Thank you very much. Thank you.